Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on October 10th, 2023. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the board. I'll call this meeting to order. If the other members of the board could please introduce themselves. Steve Revelock. Eugene Benson. Ken Lowell. And we also have joining us the, uh, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, for those in the back, uh, I'm going to apologize. We don't have uh, projecting mics this evening, so we will project our voices. Let me know if you can't hear me. Uh, let's move to our first item on our agenda this evening, which is the Redevelopment Board Report to Fall 2023 Special Town Meeting. Um, and a special thanks to Claire and Marissa and the department for turning this around so quickly after our uh, meeting last Monday evening. So Claire, I will turn it over to you um, to uh, overview the, the board report. And then my thought was that we would go um, article by article. Uh, we'll first start with any overall mm -hmm. um, comment from the board and then we'll go article by article. But Great. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks very much. And um, thanks to the board for reviewing the draft report uh, over the weekend and you know, some, of the, um, sorry, some of the responses that um, you know, we've, we've gotten already. Um, so essentially the, the, um, you know, the report covers um, by article as listed in the, in the um, warrant. Um, each of the, um, uh, each of the uh, uh, articles that we discussed at our um, deliberation and discussion meeting, um, I took uh, uh, quite a few notes at that meeting, as did, as did Marie, so I hope I captured um, at least some of the discussion um, that was had uh, that evening. Um, I tried to put it in small narratives, uh, uh, discussion section um, immediately after the language of the Warren article. Some obviously I had more um, language on than others, um, but you know, certainly open to any edits, um, additions, um, or comments from the board this evening. Great, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. So. Let us go ahead and start with um, any general comments around the opening section, and then we'll go article by article. So let's start with the introduction and overview and the zoning articles overview, um, and I'll run through the board members to see if there are any additions or corrections there, starting with Ken. I have none. Jean? On page two, near the bottom, it mentions that the ads are in the Arlington Advocate, but the Advocate technically isn't the name anymore. Okay. It's the, advo it's the Advocate and Star, so I would suggest that we change that. It's the fourth line from the bottom on page two. Yep, and Star. It's, called, it's not Arlington anymore, it's just called Advocate and Star. I, I went online today to confirm that that was correct. We lost our newspaper. Um, the, the other thing I wonder, it's a general comment, and, and I think Rachel may have mentioned this the last time, do we want to put in here whether the vote at town meeting is majority or two-thirds, or do we want to leave that for when we get to town meeting? Uh, thank you, Jean. I can just weigh in on that. We have not in the past included that. I think that's um, a great question. Um, unfortunately, for the turnaround that we have, I know that um, Claire and I had put that question to Doug Heim right as he was, um, you know, in his last week, and um, Michael Cunningham is now currently looking at that and should be getting back to us any day with whether or not uh, there are some articles which we are confirming with town council which require a two thirds, a supermajority versus a simple majority vote. Um, which affect density for um, multifamily uses. Uh, so once we have that, we can add it in. I just don't know if it's going to be in time for um, Claire and the department to submit this to town meeting. So I think that's a great suggestion for the future if the other board members are in agreement, um, if we're not able to get it in, in this, this round. Right. <clears throat> Anything else? No. If I do get an answer, um, I, I can include it for sure, if that's I mean, what the we, board desires. Yeah, we know MBTA communities is a simple majority Correct. Board, but right. it's the others that Right, so there are open space, rear yard setbacks, yep. step backs, 
corner lot corner requirements. Um, street trees or not, those are no, those are the trees. only four that I believe are subject to um, the simple majority. Could be, yeah could be subject, I, I believe that they are per the definition, but again, I'm having town council okay. um, yeah. uh, double check that. And there are specific guidelines uh, within the Mass General Law which um, relate to those two thresholds. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Uh, Steve. Okay, um, I have uh, one and possibly two. Okay. Um, the first in the, oh, this would go into the uh, the zoning article overview, where we give sort of a statutory description of how this fits into, we give it, we give a statutory description, and I was wondering if um, just a more, we might augment that with sort of like a broad overview. Some of the articles are um, oriented towards enhancing business districts, and the others are MBTA communities and trees. Um, and just some of the motivations. I provided a memo with some suggested language, um, which I, I, I believe was posted with the agenda. Yes. I also have copies. I have a copy. I'm just going to pull okay. that out. Thank you. Kim, do you want to? Yeah, and, and just, you know, so. My thought was to just uh, give a little bit of the background information, explain why they're coming now, um, because we had planned to bring them in the spring, and it was, and we're asked to defer them, and um, yeah, that's basically that. Great, I'm, and, I'm in support of that. Are there okay. any concerns with adding Steve's proposed general language to the uh, opening? Um, to, into the zoning articles overview? That's the section you wanted to add. Yeah, so the correct. section would be zone, yeah, under zoning yeah. articles overview. Perfect. Great. The other, um, the other sort of more general, um, and this, this actually goes a little beyond, further into the report, it's into the table of contents. Um, I was going to suggest that we first uh, have the articles appear in the report by order and include the article number along with the article, <clears throat> article title. Absolutely. I am fine with that. Any concerns with that change? Okay. Um, I actually have a question while we're talking about the table of contents um, about the, the ordering of these. Um, they are, they're not in numerical order, so I was just wondering if there was a particular reasoning for that. Sure, there is uh, no reasoning for that other than it was uh, difficult to move the table of contents around and provide um, okay. the appropriate draft. So uh, the articles will be listed in the order they are on the warrant um, okay. in the final draft, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, and I also um, was thinking to to Steve's um, to Steve's point, there was a, a great general note that was listed in I believe Article Ten about uh, why these zoning why the group of zoning articles that we've included are included this year that I wanted to propose to the board that in addition to Steve's language we might want to include, and I'll just read it out. Um, and I will send you the notes, my notes after this, so Thank that we you. can include this if the board feels okay. so. So the, the section was, um, reads, while the amendment to FAR by 2022 town meeting has made redevelopment of underutilized properties more attractive, other requirements such as setbacks, stepbacks, usable open space, parking buffers, and minimum lot areas and frontages frustrate the ability to reach the maximum allowable heights. So. In my mind, that could either be included in each one of those referenced um, zoning articles, or again, to Steve's point, in the overview as to why the suite of zoning articles were included um, in uh, as a package this this year for town meeting. So I wanted to um, propose that for discussion. Any thoughts? Steve? I would include it with each article where it's applicable. Okay. Gene? Um, 
I think that makes sense also. Okay. Ken, are you fine with that? Same here, yes. I okay. Agree. So we will make sure that that is included for um, step backs, usable open space, um, and cor uh, Hi, uh, which is the other one that that applies to. Pull up my list. So open space, rear yard setbacks, stepbacks, any of the dimensional lot requirements basically, we'll add that language in. Uh, anything else on the front end, including the table of contents? All right, uh, let's move on to the individual articles. Articles, excuse me. So we'll start with Article 5, open space and business districts, and we'll start with Kin for any additions or corrections. I have none. Okay, um, Steve. Uh, so two, one, um, Although the discussion, and these are just the discussion section. Uh, although the discussion um, mentions, focuses on uh, usable open space, um, I, I think the, what it's saying is also applicable to landscaped. And I had suggested some edits um, accordingly. And the other one was I received an email from the uh, chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals suggesting a language change in the main motion. Not really a language change, but a pair of quotations. Uh, that is, is that on here? No. That is not on here. Do you want to run through what those are? Yes, so there is, um, let me find it, the section in the report. Uh, yes, so this would be in section 5322.c. And the last sentence reads, for calculating usable open space and landscaped open space in the business districts, see the note at the end of the B district open space and lot coverage table in section 552a. So uh, Mr. Klein's suggestion was to put the table name in quotes, so it would be quote unquote, B district open space and lot coverage, end quote, table. Is that consistent with, I have not gone back to double check to see if that's consistent how, to how other references are mm -hmm. included? Gene is shaking his head no. It is not, it is not okay. Okay, then I, then I would say we should keep it as it is. Fair enough. But I appreciate the, mm -hmm. that up. Um, in terms of, uh, any questions or uh, comments on Steve's proposed changes per this, um, per his document in terms of identifying open space as both usable and landscaped? Um, because I, I think he's right, the, the references do apply to, to both um, and his other wording def, uh, modification, which I, I think is appropriate as well. No concerns? Okay. Great. Uh, Gene, any modifications for Article 5? I do, and I apologize. I didn't send these around before. I didn't get them done until late in the afternoon. Claire? Um, Thank you. On page 6, I would suggest two sentences be added. The first is allowing green balconies and green roofs as part of open space for occupants can enhance the use of their property and provide a pleasant green building facade. And the second that I think we should add is while decreasing the amount of usable open space for mixed use buildings, which is not required to be green or permeable and can prevent good mixed use buildings from being developed, this increases the required amount of landscaped open space for mixed use buildings, which increases the amount of green space for trees and other plantings. So I'd like to include those two sentences mm -hmm. in the discussion. Uh, thank you, Jean. I actually had a similar recommendation that I was 
intending to make around um, ensuring that we highlight the increase to landscaped open space and not just the removable of usable open space. Okay. So I'm, I'm supportive of both of those changes. Mm -hmm. Ken? Mm -hmm. Steve? Uh, supportive. Okay, great. Um, uh, one other on, on page six. Yes. It said, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Steve got to this, but it says the definition of usable open space limits were and how the public and private benefits, but usable open space is only private benefit. There's mm -hmm. no public allowance on that mm -hmm. space. So I would delete the words public and, so it should just read where and how the private benefits of open space can be achieved. The private, correct. So we take out um, public and. Public and, okay. I think that makes sense. Claire, did you? Yeah, where is this? I'm sorry. So it's that is in yeah. on Steve's um, oh, memo. Or on Steve's. No, yes. No. Okay, no. sorry. So no, no, it, it's on. Got it's, it. Well, it's also, it's also on. On his memo, right. he, he right. has another modification to yep. that same sentence. So, on that one, Claire, if you just wanted to strike out on the um, next page, to, uh, the second line, public and private, where it says public and keep private, but just public and would need to be um, removed. Yeah, got it. Great. Okay, Gene, uh, anything else no. on this one? Okay. Ken? Nope. nope. Okay. So the only item I have, and I'm going to apologize, I keep moving between windows, uh, is this is actually on each one of the articles. Let me find where it is. So where it says uh, the redevelopment board voted 400 that the zoning bylaw be and hereby is amended as follows. Mm -hmm. we, I, we need to add either favorable action or no action to what the vote was in this section. Okay. So if you could do that in each one of the sections. So th this would read then the redevelopment board voted 400, um, voted uh, favorable action 400 that the zoning bylaw be. And that will just be a general note yeah. across all of them. Great. Uh, let's move on to the next article. Uh, so the next article is rear yard setbacks in business districts. Uh, Ken, did you have any modifications for this one? No. Uh, Gene? No. Steve? Uh, no, no changes, Madam Chair. Okay, great. Let's move to great. Article 7, step back requirements in the business districts. Uh, starting with Ken, any modifications? No. Jean? I have one modification. Okay. Um, add a parenthetical um, at the end of the vote that says, and the parenthetical would say, the ARB member who voted no was in favor of the amendments opposed in this article. The no vote was because the step back requirement would remain on the fourth floor rather than be raised to the fifth floor. I know you said something like that above. Yeah, it's, re it's referenced, it's, but, but it's not, not right, clear. Not clear, so yeah. I wanted to put this parenthetical in okay. to make it clear. Ken, are you okay with that modification? Sure. It's okay. clearer. I thought that was enough, but thank you. Okay. Steve? Oh, fine by me. Okay. Great. Um, so I had one modification, and again, I will send you my um, Word document so you have these here. It. There was... Um, there was a section in when, when we had originally proposed these for Springtown meeting, there was a section that was included that had to do with the 
uh, review of zoning regulations in Arlington's neighboring communities yes. um, and around how those uh, most of those do not have any step back requirements and for those that do where those began or what the um, step back requirement was tied to uh, so my thought was that before we add the board debated whether the step back requirement should begin above you know that we add that sentence which reads a review of zoning regulations in Arlington's neighborhood and again, I'll send this to you. Arlington's neighboring communities reveals that most do not have step back requirements. Of those that do require step backs, the step back requirement either does not begin until a height of 65 feet or the step back is, is required as part of the community's design standards to allow planning boards the flexibility to negotiate step backs as part of the overall design review. Some community, communities requiring step backs require them only on the principal facade. Um, so, I thought it was important to add that back in again for context mm -hmm. as part of our discussion and then the other thing that I thought we should add is um, where we talk about the board debated whether the step back requirement should begin above the third or fourth level mm -hmm. that we add in that the board came to the conclusion that maintaining the requirement for at a minimum a step back on the principal facade only at the fourth story was contextually appropriate for the town of Arlington. The board also clarified that the step back should be measured from the principal property line. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring some um, clarification to the discussion around the fourth versus fifth story and also the fact that we are clarifying that this is from the property line, which was um, unclear, we felt, in the original bylaw. Okay. 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 So. Great. I have those um, spelled out, and again, I'll send you the word modifications. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, great. And I will note, too, that we will make Jean's proposed changes. Okay. Let's move to Article 4, Reduced Height Buffer Area, which was a no action vote. Uh, so I wanted to see if there were any modifications, starting with Ken. Nope, still no action. Okay. Uh, Gene? No change. Steve? <laughs> Nothing here. And this looks good to me. So let's move to Article 9, Corner Lot Requirements, starting with Ken. Nope. Gene? No change. And Steve? Uh, I s would suggest adding a paragraph in the discussion um, noting that um, there is a section in, in the zoning bylaw that essentially gives the board the ability to adjust setbacks during uh, environmental design review and what we're proposing is really a, a codification of how the board has been applying this and with the hope that it would lead to um, you know, uh, more predictability and, and improving the clarity of the bylaw. Thank you, Steve. I think that this is a, a good change for, or a good addition to town meeting in terms of the, um, the, the thought behind the discussion. My my, other thought, and you know, we had a we had a question from a town meeting member as you know saying, I, I just don't understand <laughs> this this article, um, and one thought I had um, because I, I can see this one's a little bit harder to understand, and because it, there's a lot of references to underlying business district versus adjacent. I thought that Gene had a great example that during our discussion he provided around when a property is next to a, the, the abutting property is residential and the setback is 15, required to be, um, I think it's 15 feet. You made the um, observation that in many cases those properties are non-conforming themselves, so it imposes a stricter requirement than what actually exists so um, again it's just one more example of why we felt that this clarification and predictability was important if we think that that's over complicating it we don't have to add it but I'm again trying to be responsive to some of the questions we've already had mm -hmm. in terms of whether or not we think it's helpful to provide an example or two um, for clarity I think the the other way to think about it is the adjoining lots on different blocks may have different required setbacks. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're constraining what happens in the business district in a different way 
which makes no sense from block to block in the business district, yep. just based on what's happening down the side street. So I think that might be a way to say it, but not exactly the way I say it, but with some better clarity. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the requirements for corner lots make all the sense in the world when the corner property and the two abutting it are all in the same district. Mm -hmm. Works very well in that case, but when they are in different, the corner lot is in the different is in a different district than anything that touches than yes. one of the adjoining ones. Then it's it it, get, it can get awkward. I think that's a great way of saying it. Um, so, uh, Steve or Jean. Um, do either one of you, I, I could take a stab at coming up with some wording, specific wording for this, um, unless either one of you have something more specific. I know, Jean, you've provided a couple of good examples. I'm leaving town tomorrow You're leaving morning, town tomorrow so morning. So um, why don't I take a stab and I can email that to Claire and um, Steve, I'll CC mm -hmm. you and, and you can help us wordsmith. Happy, to, tonight. happy to do that, Fantastic. yes. Okay, Thank you. great. So no Thanks. diagram? That that would be in the uh, slides yes. that will uh, prepare for, for town enough. meeting. Um, thank you. Is that does that work yes. for everyone? Yes. Rather yes. than in together. Yep. Um, but I agree. I think a diagram could illustrate this very clearly. Would you show it right out? Absolutely. Absolutely. A note of that. Okay, great. Uh, so the next, any other changes to uh, Article Nine? The discussion points. All right, let's move to height and story minimums. Article Eight. We'll start with Ken. Nope. Uh, Jean. The second paragraph in the discussion that says within the business districts doesn't seem to relate to this article in which we're just um, adding, you know, they must be at least two stories high. So I would completely delete the second paragraph in the discussion. And I would add to the last paragraph I would remove the phrase at the end with a requirement to include a second story that's at least 30% of the first floor dimension because that's not what we're proposing. Mm -hmm. right. And I'd replace that with what I wrote here with a requirement that the second floor be usable <clears throat> and allowing the redevelopment board to waive or modify the requirement if a second floor would be infeasible for the project open paren, e.g. for a glass gas station close paren. So those are my suggestions for this one. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Steve. So I just had a small wordsmithing change. Yep. Um, so this would be in the first paragraph. Um, striking the words intensifying development opportunities and replacing them with encouraging the, the development of higher value buildings. And I agree with both of those proposed changes. I also was um, looking at um, reword smithing that second paragraph as well. So I, I think, Jean, your suggestion of just eliminating it entirely makes um, a great deal of sense. Great. great. So I will note here, I'll take out my comment and note to accept Steve and Jean's changes. Great. Uh, let's move to Article 3, the administrative correction. Any changes uh, to this section, Ken? No. Jean? No. Steve? No. This looks good to me. Oh, the only thing I just wanted to note, sorry, before we move on to that, yeah. is when we do the slides for town meeting, 
One thing that's been helpful in the past is when we identify when the underlying zoning was underlining zoning was changed, um, which created the misnumbering. So not for this report, but when we get to the slides, the slides for town meeting, that the underlying zoning change sometimes is helpful so that people can see when that when um, when that change was made that created. I'm pretty sure it was last year. I believe I believe so too. So I was just going to go back and okay. and double check that. Great. Uh, so let's move on to the next item, which is Article 11, residential uses in the business district. Any changes to the uh, report section? With Ken? Nope. Jean? I have one suggestion to the discussion, and let's add uh, two sentences at the end. One and two family dwellings can continue to be used and are not required to be converted to any other use. They will be considered non-conforming uses, of which there are many in Arlington. Okay, that makes sense. Steve? Uh, nothing here. Uh, is any for everyone in agreement with Jean's proposed changes? Great. Um, and I think that is, I was trying to get at the same thing. It was going to suggest that um, we are disallowing development of new single family and two family homes. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to get at the same thing that you were, that we're not saying that, um, right. you know, those are no longer, uh, the existing uses are no longer permitted. So uh, I will just note then that we will move forward with Jean's proposed changes. Uh, so the next article is Article 10, Street Trees. Uh, Ken, any modifications? No. Jean? I have two modifications. Okay. In the second paragraph of the discussion, I would suggest deleting the phrase along Arlington's main corridors because this applies all mm -hmm. over town and not the main corridors. Yep. And I would suggest adding um, a sentence at the end that says, this is a necessary addition so that development in the MBTA community's overlay district will also require street trees. Great. Can I just ask one question then? Please. If you do that. It's only, it's, um, applies to every, uh, all over town only if it's going under environmental review. So if you pull a permit to add a dormer, you don't No, it has to be new development. New development, okay. Yeah, we it, haven't changed we, that part we of changed, it. Yeah, we made sure that the wording was such uh, What does it say that? It says new construction additions over 50% of existing footprint or redevelopment. We didn't change that at all. Okay, then I'm fine. I think that that is something that we'll make sure to highlight in the slides, so though that's a really good point. Oh, Ken. Uh, just, yeah, okay. I just, yep. I, 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 I agree. I think that that's an important call out. Yep. And if you think, Ken, that we should make that clear in the um, discussion, we can do that in this report as well. We yeah. can, I mean, we yeah. can highlight that. I, I think yeah, that that's we, a we good call out. We can add that saying that, that, we, that, we, that we talked about that so that this only yep. applies. I think that's a good comment. Or it doesn't apply to minor changes in dormers. Um, only to new construction renovations over 50%. And redevelopment. That's right from the yep. zoning bylaw. Steve, any modifications? Uh, none here. Great. Okay, uh, the next is Article 12, MBTA Communities Overlay District. Uh, modifications to the discussion points, starting with Ken. Um, 
I like what Gene said earlier, saying um, yeah, some points were um, um, some of the board member, well, a board member <laughs> uh, was in favor of, of this, but, mm -hmm. uh, but not in favor of all the changes and went along to, to go with this. I don't know how you said it, Gene, earlier, but it was quite elegant. So, uh, we can, yeah, we can take what I did in the other one and transpose it over here. Right, so that was the A or B member who voted no was in favor, although you didn't vote no, no. on this one. We so I think people voted, voted yes. yes. Yeah. One ARV mem A or B member who voted yes was in favor of the um, most the, but not all of the amendments proposed by the redevelopment board to yeah. the working group's original. Just add that to the part of the discussion. Yep. That's all. Okay. Because we did discuss that. Yes. In yes, length. We did. In <laughs> okay. Detail. Add to the discussion. One ARV member was in favor of. Maintaining the three highlighted original um, the study groups, uh, working, working groups. Uh, yeah, the 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 three um, highlighted working group recommendations. Yep. That's okay. Thank you, Ken. Any other modifications? Nope. Great. Jean? I have two modifications. Okay. On page 24, the third paragraph of the discussion. I would, partway down, I would delete the phrase allowing for development of multifamily housing in the R0 and R1 zones because the proposal does not do that. So about halfway down in the third paragraph, it says, allowing for the development of multifamily housing in the R0 and R1 zones, but that's not what's going on here. Okay. So I would just delete that from the third paragraph. Okay. Okay. And then I would add a new paragraph after the fourth paragraph, and um, I'll read it to you. Um, state law and guidelines require our town to rezone at least 32 acres where there would be a capacity for at least 2,046 housing units, open per end, three units or more per building, closed per end. That would not require a special permit to be constructed, open per end, i.e. as of right, closed per end. Rather than limit the zone to one area of 32 acres, which would allow the entire area to have five and six story high buildings, this article takes the context of the town into account, setting the height of buildings like those already in the areas and placing the zones on and near our transit and business corridors. Placing the zones on and near Mass Ave and Broadway will help support sustainable walkable neighborhoods where residents can walk to local shops, services, and public transportation, thereby reducing the use of automobiles it will also provide more potential customers open per in, and perhaps employees and owners close per in, for those businesses, keeping them strong and help maintain our vibrant business corridors. That is consistent with town policies and the community survey responses about how to implement the MBTA community's law. In addition, the new development will be subject to site plan review, which authorizes the redevelopment board to make sure the development is consistent with an environmental design review standards and guidelines. So I'd like to add that to sort of round out what, mm -hmm. what this is about. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great addition. May I make one proposed modification? Um, so rather than make sure the development is consistent with environmental design review standards and guidelines, those were modified slightly by what we have identified in the um, Actually, no, it was the site plan, the um, special permit requirements, were, so. which were updated. So this is fine. That makes sense. Sorry. Yeah. Had to work that out in my head yes. as I was reading it out loud. <laughs> uh, Steve, any questions or concerns about Gene's proposed change? I, I think it's a fine change. OK. 
Ken? Yes, I think it's good. Great. Steve, any additions or modifications to this section? Yeah, I'd like to propose two paragraphs after the first. Okay. Um, so the first paragraph ends with a citation of the working group's report. Yes. Um, I'm suggesting to add a paragraph that um, basically highlights the differences between the working group report and what the, uh, what the board's recommendation to town meeting is, uh, specifically the reduction in height limits in the neighborhood multifamily district, uh, the minimum parking requirements, and uh, the map changes along Mass Ave East of Orvis, Orvis Road. I think that's fine. There are several others, but I think perhaps these are the, the most substantive. So mm -hmm. perhaps the, the um, whether it's largest or. Yeah, so that's, that's why the sentence begins. These differences include. Right. So I, I know. That's yes. right, because you're referencing the substantive differences that you right. identified before. Okay. And, and the second paragraph would just be to, um, because um, <coughs> capac there's been you know, much talk in a uh, hubbub about capacity. I'd like to have a paragraph that provides the number of acres, the capacity of the proposed district, the number of existing dwellings, the difference between the existing conditions and model capacity, and how many parcels we think will be redeveloped over the next 10 years along with a net change in units. And I'm willing to work out the numbers for the last two. I'm in favor of that. I think that more data, Claire, what are your thoughts on that one? I, sure, I'm happy to make that change. I think more data is better. Yeah. Could, could you just repeat that list, please? Is that okay? Sure. Um, I'll, so what I was suggesting was the addition of a paragraph that would read something like as follows. Uh, the proposal before town meeting has a capacity of blank units on blank acres. The multifamily district has approximately blank existing dwellings such that the difference between existing conditions and model capacity is blank units. If adopted, the board anticipates that blank parcels would be redeveloped over the next 10 years, leading to a net increase of blank new units. And I'm suggesting right. these just because they're all things that I've heard on numerous occasions, you know, st statistics of, uh, that people are interested in. My only concern is that um it's a challenge to put a specific number to the anticipated number of parcels. Oh, I would, it would be a range. range? Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that. Oh, absolutely be a range. It is a range. Yes. Okay. Both, both, both in terms of parcels and number of uh, net new. And you would add the word maybe projected, some of that? Uh, projected range? Or some, something like. It's anticipates. Like, that's fine. That would be good. How about projects the potential for blank range parcels? Yes. Okay. There's no way that's knowing. Ante I mean, anticipates is mm -hmm. perhaps a stronger. Right. Yeah, projects, projects is yes. fine. Okay. You know, and I think the, the question will be, you know, if, is it 100, is it 1,000, is it 10,000? I personally, you know, from Having crunch numbers, I think it's closer. If I had to pick one of those, I would pick 100. But it's probably more than 100, but not a whole lot more than, but it's way under 1,000. <laughs> Fair enough. OK. Um, can I make one proposed change to the uh, first paragraph that you suggested? So um, where you talk about the substantive differences between the working group's recommendation and the main motion before town meeting. Um, what I'd like to do is reference why the redevelopment mm -hmm. board made that change. And so the text I was um, wanting us to discuss adding was, uh, so the, the differences, if I go back to, again, your, your wording here is the substantive differences between the working group's recommendation and the main motion before town meeting add that were adopted as a result of continued dialogue between the ARB and the members of the public who attended many the, uh, attended the many public outreach sessions, the Department of Planning and Community Development, the town's uh, uh, planning consultant, and the members of the working group. Sounds good. 
Okay. No. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. But it was it was more than that. Then um, let's add to it. It it was also for the height limits. I've forgotten the exact wording that's in the guidance, but the height limits are more contextual to the side streets than um, the proposed height limits. Uh, the minimum parking requirement is consistent with reports that have been done throughout the region. And um, uh, can I and add? The, the map changes because we think it's important to rezone. So the so, things that we talked about at the last. Meeting. Okay, so let's let's add that in now. So specifically, let's do them in order that they're in there. So the first. Uh, so, Steve defines what those are after that sentence that I added in, and then I think we add in a section that says um, the ARB um, adopted these changes due to the um, Let's start with the height in the multifamily district, right, the neighborhood so multifamily. So the ARB adopted these so, changes. So here's the language from the guidance that I think we can use. Okay, uh, due to the scale density and aesthetic of the neighborhood district. Thank you. In the neighborhood district. In the uh, neighborhoods of, Neighbor. yeah, in the existing neighborhoods. Of the proposed neighborhood. Is it existing or adjacent neighborhoods? No, it, well. It's existing and adjacent it, neighborhoods, well, yeah. it's really the neighborhoods in which the overlay is going okay. right? Okay. Um, the next is minimum the minimum parking, parking um, to maintain consistency. Across the town and because studies have shown that one space per unit is appropriate and because they can be reduced with a transportation demand management. Maintain. Um, okay, so I'll reference A, B to maintain consistency across town um, in accordance with MAPC parking study guidelines or parking study. Conclusions. Conclusions. And because they can be reduced with transportation and land management plans. I get a whole bunch of typos that I'm really going to apologize for, Claire. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> and C. Um, This is the change of map to um, uh, to main, uh, to maximize the potential in um, to allow. Or, shouldn't I say to allow a process to rezone that part of Mass Ave without. The Arlington, the East Arlington <laughs> Business District, right. right? Right. As a complete um, as a complete district rather than piecemeal at this in, time. in a holistic manner. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. 
as to Steve, I also thought we needed to put in capacity in mm -hmm. acres, so I think that's the right thing to do. Do we know what they are at this point? Didn't you do that survey? Well, we changed the map. Okay, so you have to redo that survey. So, well, there's, yeah, it's... No, has UTL told us the capacity in the acres? What is it? It's the capacity is... 3,216 units. 3,216 on 115.6 acres. Great, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, I, I can fill in the other blanks tonight if Great. you send me the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> terrific. forwarded the info to you. Okay. Uh, any other modifications to the discussion section uh, under Article 12? Okay. Uh, anything else on the report in general before I ask for a motion? Okay. The only thing that I will just note for the record is that this, uh, we will take a vote to um, on, uh, we will take a vote to deliver this uh, report to a uh, special town meeting. The only thing, again, that I'll note is that this will be amended uh, once town meeting starts, uh, once the hearing is complete for Article 13 uh, on October 16th. So we'll do an addendum? We will need to do an addendum okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. for that article. Okay. So is there a motion to approve and deliver the Arlington Redevelopment Board uh, report to 2023 Special Town Meeting as amended this evening? So moved. Is there a second? second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all and thank you again to Claire and Marissa and everyone in the department for pulling this together so quickly. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, let's move to the next agenda item, which is uh, new business. And I'll hand it over to you, Claire. Great. So um, in conversation with the chair of the working group, um, we knew that there would have to be at some point um, a vote to disband um, this uh, body. The ARB voted to establish the working group on November 7th of last year. Um, and the recommendation is that we vote to, or uh, you vote to disband um, the working group as of the beginning of the special uh, fall 2023 special town meeting. Um, working group members wanted to still attend precinct and other meetings um, as uh, members of the working group, but that um, once town meeting started, they were okay with dissolution of the group. Great, thank you, Claire. Sure. Um, so I'll open it up for discussion, and one question I would have is should we just band it at the start of special town meeting or at the end of special town meeting in case any other questions potentially arise because I know that these will not be the first articles that sure. are taken up. You know, it's probably a good idea to say uh, at the at the conclusion of the special town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, any discussion starting with Ken? No. Jean? No. Steve? Nothing. Great. Um, is there a motion to uh, disband the MBTA Communities Working Group at the conclusion of fall 2023 special town meeting. So motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, and at this time, we'll move to uh, agenda item number three, which is open forum. So at this time, any member of uh, the public who's joining us this evening who wishes to speak, um, please raise your hand. Uh, you'll have up to three minutes to address the board and we have a um, location for you right over here and we'll pull a microphone over. So, please. Pl please, yes, um, so that way we can pick up the microphone for the recording <clears throat> or your voice on the microphone for the recording. And if you could please introduce yourself with your first, last name and address for the record, that would be yeah. great. Um, Thank you. Uh, Jordan Weinstein, I live at 23 Lennon Road. Uh, here in Arlington. I was going to say Lexington for some reason. 
um, Arlington. Um, this is, uh, it's not the ultimate, it's sort of the penultimate conclusion of a long um, involvement uh, from the outside anyway as a town meeting member and, and a resident and property owner in Arlington to be following this whole debate. Um, and I'm pleased that uh, the Better Angels and uh, the uh, uh, perceptions of uh, the minds of the ARB were, were set in motion and were able to see what I felt was an excessive uh, plan that was handed to you and that uh, uh, an enlarged plan that, that was unnecessarily large uh, for a couple of reasons. And I'm glad that you all voted to uh, reduce the heights in the neighborhoods um, and also to add parking, all of which has helped to reduce what was initially thought to be a capacity of 20,000 and 15,000 and then ultimately probably closer to 7,500 capacity down to about 3,000 which is about 150% of, of the required capacity that the MBTA uh, Act, which I call the MBTA Gentrification Act, because that's really what I think it is. What disappoints me about this whole process, to be honest, is the, the wrapping of it, the packaging of it as almost a social justice uh, presentation to correct uh, the injustices of uh, zoning that has historically been looked on, at least now in retrospect, as exclusionary and not inclusive. Um, and I, I agree with those characterizations of what suburban America has become and how it's used zoning to exclude minorities and, and poor people. My problem with this, though, is that the way I perceive it and the language that the state has handed to us, the, the mandate, has nothing to do with affordability. If our application with the state for our own affordable overlay, as it is now, 15% uh, of uh, six units or more, is rejected, and I just want to point out that Lincoln's has been rejected, and they started well before we did. We're going to be, probably, most likely, we're going to have a, uh, an overlay that's going to have a much reduced uh, uh, inclusionary zoning, 10%. You're at time. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. I think that it's just disingenuous the way this whole thing has been rolled out. You've been heard. Thank you. Uh, anyone else with, wishing to speak this evening? Please. Get a table and everything. Yes. <laughs> great. Kicking it up a notch tonight. Yeah. Putting my timer on. Um, I think you guys have been, done a great job. I'm sorry. Could you uh, just I, introduce yourself? I'm first sorry. Last name? Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street. Thank you. Um, uh, I think you've done a great job, and uh, the only thing that I and Green Streets Arlington is not thrilled about is you're not you won't be surprised to hear is your your removal of the of the planning department site's recommendation for the environmental bonus versus you put in the lead gold, and I really want to be supportive of everything you've done, and I I'm not an architect I don't know about lead or sites. Um, but I do know about Google. I have been able to do some research, and I'm not seeing how LEED Gold is giving us any of the environmental outside uh, benefits that we were looking for, um, the sustainable landscaping, uh, climate resilience, rain gardens, trees, bushes, all kinds of good stuff in the setbacks. Um, and I know that you're, this isn't a dialogue, um, but we are very concerned about that. Um, we'd like to talk maybe doing a friendly amendment on the floor of town meeting, um, or maybe I can just be better educated on what you're suggesting, um, and then I'll feel fine about it. So 
I just wanted to say that I very much respect all of you and um, I, I'm open to the idea that this that that the um, suggestion of lead gold did include outdoor kinds of environmental enhancements that we were looking for um, and if if, if that's the case, I would be, and I and Green Streets Arlington would be most appreciative of some communication or opportunity to find out what the thinking is on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak, please? Um. Uh, my name is Kristen Anderson. Um, I'm a town <coughs> meeting member, and I live at 12 Upton Road West. And I just wanted to say that um, I've spent a lot of time watching how this elegant sausage has been made. And um, I'm really happy that um, the ARB has uh, chosen to uh, protect existing businesses um, and create a pathway for planning in the future for um, more commercial growth. Um, and that was the thing I was most concerned about from the start. It's the thing I remain concerned about. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak, please? Grant Cook, Wollaston Ave. On the topic of social justice, I was really gratified walking in East Arlington today to see a support MBTA community sign on the front yard of the Calvary Church. And I know there's been talk here about targeting churches. To see a church take that lead in social justice was really refreshing. Um, I'll use an, another story about wealth. Um, you know, I, there's a house on the market right now just across the border in Winchester. Uh, it was a one so a, kind of what you call your affordable house in Arlington, which means it sold for a million dollars. The house most of us actually in this room probably live in about that price. It got torn down and turned into a 2.7 million dollar house, at least listed. That is wealth. Now, six or seven people could get together in multifamily, spend seven, eight hundred, a million on condos, and truly afford homes, and they could outbid that $2.7 million wealthy person. But we've rigged the game. So the only thing that can exist is that $2.7 million house. That is the protection of wealth and the system we've built with our reliance on single family. And I'm glad to see the start of rolling that back. And I hope as we touch the east and touch the heights where I live, we do much more of it. So good start. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? OK. Um, with that, we will close public comment. And um, Susan, I know that you had some um, specific questions. And if you'd um, like to reach out or, or um, stay afterwards, we'd be happy to go through a little bit more about the um, lead um, sustainable sites sections um, and also some of the alternative compliance paths which we built in, in addition to lead into the um, proposed MBTA communities piece. Uh, so with that, let me get back to my agenda. Uh, are there any other items from the board? Then I will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you all for joining us tonight. This meeting is adjourned.